Good morning. Thank you very much for uh, attending this joint press conference this morning. I'm sorry, I uh, apologize to the uh, leaders of the National Federation Party for turning up late. Uh, I was caught up in a, a funeral service for a, a friend and a fellow old scholar of uh, Queen Victoria School. I'm very pleased to be here at the headquarters of our political partners, the National Federation Party. Professor Biman Prasad and I regularly meet, and we meet with our teams to talk about issues and strategize on the coming election. Very soon, we will be announcing some joint appearances in September, because that's only next week, where we will meet the people, talk to them, and also enjoy their company. Hopefully, they will enjoy ours, too. Of course, we know that the, uh, the media has been curious about the dialogue that we have had, the exchanges we have had on an issue, an unfortunate issue that uh, emerged two weeks ago involving a provisional candidate of the People's Alliance. He had made a comment about visitors. And coming here this morning, I chose this seat. Because those of you who are old hands at protocol, you'll know that the host sits on the right. I'm a visitor to the headquarters, so I sit on the left. I have made a, a public statement on that uh, unfortunate use of the word visitor, which was taken out of context by some, and made into a uh, public football. I apologize sincerely, I truly apologize to those that might have been offended or insulted by that statement. I want to assure everyone that that was not the view of the People's Alliance. Ms. Warred has told us that her comments were well meant, and we have told her that she must be more sensitive in her use of, of words, particularly when we're using a tongue that's not our native tongue. We have discussed the issue with our friends in the National Federation Party. You will hear shortly from uh, Professor Biman Prasad on this issue. But I repeat, our commitment and our promise that the People's Alliance, we made that statement and this commitment when we joined in partnership with the National Federation Party. We recognize the right of every Fijian citizen and every national who call Fiji home. The Fiji First Party wants to practice the politics of fear and division. They think that this will knock out our partnership and knock it off course. But that will not happen. The People's Alliance National Federation Party partnership has deep foundations. My own personal association with the National Federation Party did not begin in 2022. It began more than 25 years ago when I had worked with the Honorable Jairam Reddy to bring the 1997 Constitution to Fiji and its people. He will always have a place in the history of this great nation as one of Fiji's greatest leaders and statesmen, and it was my honor to have worked with him. It was when I was Prime Minister that Mr. Reddy became the first Indo-Fijian leader to address the Great Council of Chiefs. It was when I was Prime Minister that we traveled jointly 
to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Edinburgh, in Scotland. And it was Mr. Jaram Reddy, as leader of the opposition, who gave the nation report on my invitation. We joined together in 1999 to fight an election. We did not win. But I have had no regrets about our association, just as I look forward to this association and partnership with the 2022 general elections coming up. We know it will have a very different result. I'm confident of that. We're setting the agenda for the future. The People's Alliance National Federation Party Partnership is a government in waiting. We are clear that I will lead that government. We have outstanding talent and experience in our candidates that we can bring to the governance of this nation. We have professionals. We have doctors, one of them is sitting here today. We have people who have worked in government, in the civil service. We will bring their experiences to national leadership. We have business people. We have trade uni unionists. But most importantly, we have candidates who are deeply connected to the community and who are ready to listen to the people's concerns. And I want to reiterate to the people of Fiji some of the key points that I made at the launch of the People's Alliance in Narewa 10 months ago. First, we must return Fiji to open democratic government. We will protect democracy in our parliament, respect the parliamentary processes, consult widely in legislations. We will not ambush the people and parliament with new laws on two-day notices. Second, it is our cabinet which will provide the leadership of this nation. Leadership as the executive branch of government. No more two-man rule. We will, be, we will be a body of equals, consulting with the people and bringing diverse views to the table for the best results for the people of this land. Third, we will end the fear that people have of their government. The government belongs to them. Why should they fear their government? And we will remember that we are all in government, we are all servants of the people, not the other way around. Fourth, we will mobilize the skills and talents of the new government to fix the devastation caused by years of poor economic leadership. We must urgently address the need to improve the people's employment and, and income, the worsening state of our national infrastructure, and the long-term needs of the health and education sectors. We have made specific commitments. We will return to a respectful, mutually beneficial relationship with the University of the South Pacific, where we honor our commitments, including working to fix the financial mess created by the government, uh, by Fiji's failure to pay its dues to the university. Of course, the Vice Chancellor of the University of the South Pacific shall be allowed to return. We will review the haphazard, poor-made laws of the Fiji First Government, including many which hold back our economic development and which discriminate against our indigenous people. Laws like the infamous Bill Number no. 17, which is now Act 22, which improved nothing but caused deep anger among the people because they were not consulted. In October 20, 2021, I made a personal commitment to ensure that, that Professor Bridgelal 
one of Fiji's most outstanding sons, would be allowed to return to his own country. Tragically, two months after that, he died. But we are committed to honoring him, to allow his family to return to Fiji, his ashes, his remains, to be returned to the home of his ancestors in Madwata. So many things must change for Fiji so that we can grow and thrive. But the first thing we must do is to vote out this small-minded, vindictive government, which is barren of ideas and which ignores our deep, long-term problems. All it can do is spend money in the hope that people will vote for them. It is time for the people of Fiji to choose a new leadership. And it's time for Ayah Sayed Kayum to stop playing hide and seek, announce the election date, let the people know that is their right. And we challenge Frank Bainamarama and Ayah Sayed Kayum. Put your leadership to the democratic test. Let us use the people you want you put your leadership to the democratic test. Let us see if the people want you, want this tired two-man government, or do they want a new, united, fresh team of leaders ready to listen, ready to lead, and ready to bring all our people together in the urgent task of rebuilding our beloved Fiji. We are that team. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rambuka. I'm pleased to be hosting uh, our political partners, the leader of the People's Alliance Party, Mr. Sidhiveni Rambuka, here at the National Head Federation Party headquarters today. And here, my friends, you are looking at the leadership. You're looking at the leadership of the post-election coalition government which will work tirelessly to make Fiji once again a land of hope and opportunity. But before we embark on our journey to reset the moral compass of governance in Fiji and indeed talk about it, we think it is time for us to talk to the nation and the media about some current issues. In particular, about racial connotations and who, in fact, is actually guilty of fanning the flames of racism in our nation. And what I'll say today is a warning or a shot across the bow that should be heeded by so-called wannabes and those riding the racial bandwagon in the hope of retaining power by dividing our people and compartmentalizing them and behaving like that they are the only savior. And this, ladies and gentlemen, specifically relates to the comments made by the proposed candidate of the People's Alliance, Ms. Warit, about using the word visitors while expressing a political opinion. Like any other individual's right to free speech, Ms. Warit was entitled to her opinion. But I say to her and all those out there, but freedom does not allow you to say things, or freedom does not come with, or it comes with certain amount of responsibility. Her word visitors wasn't used culturally, but politically used. And that made it racist and distasteful but not inflammatory nor insightful. But it was labeled as such, and now Ms. Warid has been referred to FICAC, and since she is being subjected to full scrutiny of law, we will therefore, in all fairness to due process, 
are not going to be judgmental or hold an individual into contempt or otherwise. However, we will set the record straight once and for all, given that the National Federation Party has been ridiculed and accused of keeping quiet when the issue first surfaced. And Mr. Mbuka, I want to uh, tell you that I'm going to take a bit longer than you uh, to make, make those points. The NFP acted swiftly and responsibly. Both Mr. Mbuka and I met a day after Ms. Warit's post, and like any responsible leader would do to another, we raised the issue with him and with the leader of the People's Alliance Party. Mr. Rambuka issued an apology, a public apology, and not, as some say, you know, weeks later. That was an immediate response from the leader of the People's Alliance Party, uh, or as, as claimed otherwise by the taxpayer-funded media. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, we in NFP do not support the comparison of visitors. Ms. Warid certainly, in my view, in our view, chose her words badly. And let me say, every Fiji citizen, regardless of their ethnic background, has equal rights to every aspect of citizenship. That goes without saying. Totally contrary to Fiji First cronies and the enablers, the NFP has forever, has forever, throughout its 59-year history, condemned all forms of racism. As early as 1946, 17 years before A.D. Patel became the founder leader of the NFP, he successfully and quite vigorously opposed a motion on safeguarding the Fijian race. And during the debate on the motion in the Legislative Council, A.D. Patel tore, every, tore apart every fiber of an argument by the mover of the racist motion. And he said at that time that the motion pitted one community against the other when both ethnic groups coexisted peacefully and lived side by side following the end of the indenture in this country. He described, you know, at that time, Edi Patel described relationship between Fijians and Indians as like sugar and milk, where both communities were helping each other at all times. 51 years later, as pointed out by Mr. Rambuka on 6 June 1997, Jeram Reddy, the former NFP and longest serving opposition leader, while becoming the first Indo-Fijian to address the Great Council of Chiefs of Boselebu Bakaturanga, said, and I want to quote him. This is what he said. The Indians of Fiji brought to these shores as laborers did not come to conquer or colonize. We, the descendants, do not seek to usurp your rights ancient rights and responsibilities. We never have, we have no wish, no desire to separate ourselves from you. Fiji is our home, Fiji is our only home. We have no other, we want no other. Our ancestors came to this land in search of a better life, in search of a future. They dream for their children and their children's children. They, though they traveled to these islands long, and long after your ancestors, surely the dreams and hopes of those who landed from the Leonidas were not that different from those who came ashore after the epic earlier voyages from the West." Unquote. The place and status of the Indo-Fijian and other communities in respect of the indigenous community has been guaranteed. All communities in Fiji have enjoyed common and equal citizenry long before long before Baini Marama and Kiyum legislated the 2013 Constitution. The NFP's defense and struggle for equality, dignity, respect, and justice for all men and women in our nation is recorded in indelible ink. It cannot be erased. In a multicultural, multiracial, multireligious country 
like Fijia politicians and those seeking the mandate of the people to assume the leadership of the democracy must moderate their positions. It is an absolute necessity that the peaceful coexistence of all our communities, especially the Ito K and Indo Fijian communities, is not shattered by utterances from which wrong perceptions can be drawn. And right now, let me say this, right now, the only people trying to gain political capital from this are those sitting in government. And they are Aya Sayed Kayum and Borangye Baini Marama. And together with them, the supporters, the propaganda supporters in FBC and Fiji Sun. No one else, no one else. This is the usual politics of distraction from the fundamental ills plaguing our nation today. The people of Fiji must never forget about the leadership of Frank Baini Marama and Ayaz Sayed Kayum when Fiji was locked down under COVID. While hundreds of people died, they were actually hiding from the people because there was no good news. They could not face the truth and face the people and show the real leadership that was required at that time. But now everyone in Fiji can see what is happening. We can see the ministers running around the country, giving speeches, giving out money, giving out goodies. But the people have seen through this. They know that if these people come to power again, they will just go back to the arrogant, bullying ways. So now in the last gasp attempt to cling to power, Fiji Fest has resorted to frightened people. And people, and particularly, I, I would say, Indo-Fijians, by accusing others of racism. Because after more than 15 years of failure, they have nothing to offer the people, so they try to frighten them instead. And let me tell Frank Baini Marama and Sayed Kayum that your efforts to undermine the National Federation Party as a weak party will fail. It has failed in the past, it will fail again. Because we are an impregnable fortress. Everybody in this country knows. A fortress of principles as a party. And we haven't shaken them unlike, you know, the two-man rule of Fiji Fest that we have now. And who have put their personal and political advancement above national interest. Fiji First, Frank Baini Marama, Aya Sayed Kayum, somehow regard themselves as the protectors of Indo Fijians. Nothing can be further from the truth. And this, and it is supported by the propagandists, you know, taxpayer propagandists like the FBC and the Fiji Sun. They themselves are either racist or they nitpicking or politicking, invoking fear, or plainly lying. And we, when, what we see as a result of this, the usual suspects, like Ashwin Raj, and now Tupodron in Dalo, actually scurrying out of the holes like small mice in the hope of feeding the crumbs of racist venom spewed by the political masters. Ashwin Raj has no shame. Instead of defending the taxpayers who pay his salary, he perfectly fits the role of a puppet or a lap dog dancing or barking at the command of his masters. And for more than five years, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it, it, it pains me to say this, for five years now, the NFP, the leadership of NFP, and everyone in NFP has avoided saying anything about Mrs. Tapodro Nindalo who having quit as the party president in January 2017, continued to take pot shots at the party, and especially our president. But for her now to say that a 59-year-old party, the oldest in the South Pacific, which has weathered many political storms and upheavals, is controlled by Mr. Rambuka or anyone else, for that matter is unforgivable. It's really unforgivable. 
That's what she's saying. Oh, the NFP is controlled by Mr. Rumbuka. She was the president of the party, my friends, for 34 months until January 2017. She perfectly knows the principles of the party. Unfortunately, she has now chosen to be a mouthpiece, an apologist for Aya Sayed Kayum and Frank Beni Marama. <coughs> that's her choice, that's her freedom. But I want to say to her, those who live in glass houses, do not throw stones at others. And this time, she has really gone too far. She actually blames the NFP for working with Mr. Mr. Rambuka as her reason for leaving the party. Throughout the last five years, we have only stated that Mrs. Donin Dalo herself knows what is the truth and why she left the party. And we know she left the party. She went and formed another party, Hope. She couldn't even save that party. The whole party actually got less votes than her vote uh, when she was with the NFP. So Ayaz Sayed Kuyum and Frank Baini Mrama think that they are the only protectors of the rights and interests of the Indo-Fijian community because they keep referring to that. But they conveniently forget, and Mr. Rambuka talked about, that they banned a son of a Girmitia, a son of Fiji, Professor Bridge Lal, and his wife from entering Fiji just because Professor Lal <coughs> championed democracy you know, after the coup in 2007. And 12 years after his banishment, Professor Lal you know, died on Christmas Day last year. Fiji and the world ladies and gentlemen, lost a preeminent historian on Girmit, Girmitia and their descendants. Professor Lal's widow, Dr. Padma Narsi, the Lal's two children, they want to fulfill their father's final wishes for his ashes to be interred at his place of birth in Tabuya, Vanualevu. But this cruel and heartless government had still not lifted the ban on her preventing her from, from doing that. You know, and, and, and sometimes you wonder, you know, are Ayaz Sayed Kayum and Frank Baini Marama even frightened of Professor Lal's ashes? Why are they treating Dr. Padma Lal like that? And, and, and the director of the uh, Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission, Ashwin Raj, the only public thing he said was, oh, he's a former Fiji citizen, he's a foreigner, so the government has the right to ban him from coming to Fiji. I mean, only a, in my view, only a deranged mind would call any former Fiji citizen a foreigner. And in fact, you know, uh, it is down outright, downright racism, you know, when you say that. But also, I want to use this opportunity uh, to say that Frank Baini Marama has made many inflammatory and racist comments over the years. People don't know. He even defended the execution of all coups since 1987. And while Frank Baini Marama has forgotten his own views about coups and racist utterances, we haven't. And I'll provide you just two examples of this. One, before the 2014 election, Baini Marama showed his true colors. When the PM was asked about my challenge for both leaders to have a debate, Baini Marama replied, and I quote, this is very important, and I quote, he's an Indian. He's an Indian. Without me, he wouldn't be sticking around, unquote. This was Fairfax Media of Australia, published in the Sydney Morning Herald, and the age title, Bula Bully, and reported by Kathy Marks. That statement alone proves what Frank Baini Marama is thinking about Indo-Fijians. He actually thinks that Indo-Fijians are not patriotic, but are only in Fiji because of his leadership. He must remember, and let me remind him, he must remember that the indenture ended over 100 years ago. And I always say he's silent 25 of the Fiji First MPs in Parliament may be indebted to him and beholden to him, 
and his defecto PM, but not the rest of Fiji. Uh, that he should know. They are not beholden to him. Two, another example of PM's racism was his attack on NFP in October 2006. Speaking to the state broadcaster, FBC, Baini Marama insulted the intelligence of the people of Fiji by labeling the National Federation Party as racist just because the party champions the interest of the cane growers. And Prime Minister said this, said his Fiji First Party would not form a coalition with another party for 2018 general election because their policies don't align. And he said, and I quote, I quote, the National Federation Party is now not the same as the NFP of old. I would think that the NFP party is now a racist party. That's why they, all, they are all in the cane fields because of the vote of the Indo-Fijians. And the, the policies are totally at the extreme nowadays, unquote. This is what he said in 2016. This statement alone sums up the political credibility of the Prime Minister. It is shameful and despicable. Is it only his divine right to talk about growers? And if you use the PM's logic, you know, if you use his warp logic, didn't his role as commander of RFMF for 15 years, whose personnel are it okay, make him a racist? So if I was talking about the cane growers, he levels me as a racist. And now, ladies and gentlemen, in my view, his dictatorship has reached new heights. He keeps on raving and ranting, you know, supported by FBC and Fiji Sun about only the 1987 coup, demonizing Mr. Rambuka because he suits them. They keep talking about 87. And at the, in the same breath, you know, attacking the minions, attack me, you know, for having this partnership with Mr. Rambuka. They forget Mr. Rambuka's contribution, his, his period as a prime minister, a very good prime minister, between 1992 until 1999. They forget about the 1997 constitution, and they Despite all that, they continue the filth and gutter level campaign in the hope that it will recast the fast dwindling political fortunes uh, for them. Mr. Rambuka and I have embraced a culture of genuine cooperation, yeah. conciliation, bipartisanship, and working together to achieving lasting social, economic, and political advancement. And let me tell all those people there, those detractors, we are marching ahead in the spirit of tolerance, genuine goodwill, genuine goodwill and understanding. And this is a time, my friends, to emphatically reject the politics of divisiveness, connivance, deceit and fear mongering, which has brought our beloved nation to a critical juncture, critical crossroads. Make no mistake, and this is what I want to say to the people of Fiji, make no mistake. Together as a mighty force, we will deliver a resounding victory to form the next government of the people. Yeah. Yeah. By the people, for the people. We will put Fiji first. Unlike Fiji First, we will not fill our pockets with ex exorbitantly high salaries while thousands of families struggle daily to put food on the table for their children. Unlike Fiji First, we will not earn an average of $3,000 in daily overseas travel allowance, while many thousands are told to mitigate the very high cost of living with a $180 allowance to cover a six-month period. We will be a government that actually shows empathy, care, kindness, and compassion at all times. Unlike Fiji Fest that goes into sleep mode for more than three years, only to suddenly wake up and start running to the people. Repairing roads, you can see roads being repaired everywhere. Dishing out freebies and fear mongering 
because it's an election year. We will be a government that will restore our public health and medical services and facilities, which has been turned into a state of decay by the Fiji First government that took 18 months, and, and our president, uh, Honorable Pio Tikundu I would remember, they actually took 18 months when you pointed out in parliament to fix a door of a hospital washroom that has failed to ensure adequate supply of medication, consumables, and essential drugs. We will be a government that will allow our tertiary students unrestricted access to scholarship and loans, unlike the Fiji First, who have discriminated against those students who opted for foundation studies to enter universities only to be denied access to scholarship despite achieving the grades. We will be a government that believes in working together, embracing inclusivity and bipartisanship. Unlike Fiji First, that has totally rejected, totally rejected bipartisanship for the last eight years. And both our honorable members know this. We are leaders of two parties who are, who are committed to genuinely working together in the national interest. To the people, we say, get ready. Make sure you are registered. Make sure you know where you, you, you have to go and vote. Do the same for your family members. I think it's very, very important. And friends, once in every four years, you are in charge. Once in every four years, you are in charge. You have the choice, and you must use your vote to change all of this. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, this is our message to the people of Fiji. A very clear message from both me and Mr. Mbuka and everyone else in the People's Alliance and the National Federation Party. Don't let them lie to you. Don't let them lie to you. Don't let them bully you. And don't let them scare you. And finally, don't let them buy your boat. Don't let them buy your boat. <laughs> After 15 years of dictatorship, bring new leadership to our country. Trust us. Trust Mr. Rambuka. Trust me. Trust all those good people in both parties. And believe in us. Believe in us. Believe in us. Because we, Mr. Rambuka and I, and everyone else in this partnership, believes in Fiji. Thank you, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rambuka and Mr. Prasad Navil from Fiji Village. Mr. Rambuka, I have a question for you, two-part question, in relation to the comments by Ms. Warid. Do you think that the right actions have been taken by the party and uh, you have been labeled as a weak leader by the AG in terms of handling the issue? What are your comments on that? I believe that I have uh, done what a good leader would do. I called Ms. Warid to the office, and in the presence of other officers, told her to be careful about what she writes, particularly in, in, uh, in consideration of the uh, very sensitive uh, times that we are going through, eh? particularly in the interpretation of what we say or write. At the end of that, I said to them, you are now warned, but you remain on the uh, uh, provisional candidates list. Please do not do it again. Uh, just uh, going, to, going forward to some other issues, a photo came out, I think, last night of you and Mr. Prasad with Mr. Choudhury at one residence or somewhere. If both the leaders can talk about the context of that photo and what were the discussions in that meeting. Uh, let, maybe, yeah. uh, let, let me uh, go first. Um, <laughs> Yes, we had a we had a good uh, uh, cup of tea, and I think you had uh, a, yes. you had a wine as well. Yes, yes. 
um, the um, the um, the NFP um, has a has a long standing mandate uh, from the party uh, to talk to all leaders, all leaders, including Frank Baini Marama, uh, on matters of national interest. Uh, and so uh, last night's discussion is based on that principle uh, that the party has. It has nothing to do with the partnership uh, that the People's Alliance and the National Federation Party have signed. And as I've said earlier, we are confident, we are sure, we are moving in the right direction, and we are confident that we will be, this partnership will be the next government of Fiji. So, um, Eva from Fiji TV. Just a follow-up question to Ms. Warri's issue. Um, the Attorney General had further stated that um, you, Mr. Rambuka, have not condemned that statement by Ms. Warri at any point in time. You have just apologized. There's still comments on that? You have. Uh, what I said to them is take it down and apologize. Take it down and apologize, and which we did. And uh, that implies that, uh, and I reiterated at the meeting that I had with her, I do not agree with what she said because of the times that we are in. Uh, <clears throat> you said, Mr. Rambuka, that you'll be making joint appearances next month with Mr. Prasad. Uh, what are some of the areas you'll be looking at? And from your previous visitations, what are some of the issues on the ground that the people are raising with you? You want us to give our manifesto? <laughs> not, the ma not, the man <laughs> not the manifesto, but just the issues that the people are raising with you. Well, if they uh, uh, listen to what we have said, if they read what we have put out in uh, writing, they will have a fair idea of what we want to do uh, to improve the lot of the ordinary Fijian of today. Okay? And uh, detailed accounts of that will come when we make the, that announcement. Just, just in uh, response to um, that question, um, obviously we've made uh, uh, several joint appearances. We've uh, traveled together. And uh, some of the key issues that people have uh, brought to us, uh, of course, you know, number one is the rising cost of living. Uh, well before, even well before the COVID crisis hit us, People are reeling under the, the high cost of living uh, and government's you know, support uh, you know, towards that in the last two or three years uh, has been haphazard. In fact, this is the only government uh, that I know has actually asked the employees of this country to support the employers in, in times of crisis by taking a cut in the contribution towards the National Federation Party, not only helping the employers, but also helping themselves by taking a cut in the FNPF contribution for themselves. So that's the number one issue. The second, the second issue, uh, the second most important issue that people have come uh, to us uh, is the deteriorating uh, state of health services. In fact, we know and the people know that the never in the history of this country, never in the history of this country, we have had such pathetic and bad delivery of health services in this country. But that's, that's another big area. Of course, uh, right now, people are concerned about the future of the country. They are con they're concerned about the economy, its management. They're concerned about the debt levels. Uh, some people think that people don't understand the, the meaning of debt, the impact of debt. I can tell you, ordinary people out there understand the burden of debt. They know that at the end of the day, it is they who are going to bear the bulk of the burden of paying that debt. So, so people are concerned about uh, all that, plus people are concerned about governance issues. They're concerned about the fear that this government has created into the people. In fact, 
in a democracy, people, governments fear people. In this country today, it's the opposite. People fear the government, and, and people are concerned about it. So those are some of the, the, the main issues, uh, apart from uh, issues in agriculture, in, in education, uh, that we hear quite regularly. And, and we will continue to hear that. When are the two parties expected to announce the rest of the provisional candidates? You ready? <laughs> we um, are ready. We have uh, our selection committee has done all its work. Uh, we have uh, we're actually overwhelmed by the number of applications. We have um, already finalized all those uh, 55. I think it's more than 55, Saini. Um, uh, plus, we have uh, a good number of candidates in the reserve list, and so we are ready, and we would be um, making further announcements uh, as soon as we feel it's appropriate. I think my committee is ready. My deputy leader is here. He's already told us we are ready to make uh, the announcement. We would we'd like to uh, make that up at the end of uh, this next week, after the sitting of parliament. Uh, Mr. Rambuka, uh, the General Secretary of Sodelpa has uh, stated that some uh, outgoing MPs from Parliament has um, indicated that they will be joining your party, um, and these are the ones that are mudding waters for Sodelpa. Just your comments on that. Uh, he should know. Um, before they join us, they would have to resign from uh, Sodelpa. We have not received any applications for, uh, from them, and uh, it'll go, you know, they, they resign there first before they can apply to join us. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. I think that we should all have Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, respected party. Thank you. 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 Thank you.